In this next video, we're going to go a little bit deeper into talking about that aesthetics component of the ggplot. So we talked a little bit in the last video about how you can map the values in different columns of your data frame to different aesthetics, like the position on the x-axis or the y-axis, or color, or shape, or size, or anything like that. Which of those aesthetics you can call depends on the type of geom that you're adding. So I wanted to show you how you can figure out which aesthetics you have available to you within a certain geom call. You can go to the help file for any of the geom functions. So make sure you have ggplot2 loaded. And then if I wanted to see the aesthetics available, for example, for geom point, I can open up the help file for that. Now this starts with the normal pieces, the description and the usage. But as you scroll down, you'll see a section on aesthetics. That has all of the aesthetics that are possible for that particular geometric object or that geom. In bold, it will have the ones that you have to specify. So you have to specify X and Y when you're adding a geom point. The ones that aren't in bold, like alpha and color and fill here, are ones that you can set if you want to, but you do not have to set. The next thing I wanted to talk about with, with aesthetics is what if you don't want to map them? What if you always want to have the same color? For example, what if you wanted to plot each of your points as blue rather than the default value? In this case, you can still specify an aesthetic, but to specify it as a constant, you will want to do it outside of that AES call. So let's take a look at that with our example data. I'll be using the Beijing PM data that we've been using in many of the videos for this week. Um, if you need to, make sure you go back in old code and run any of the setup for that. And if we look at what that looks like, go down here. So right now I have on some columns that I added in the lecture for the logical vectors, the beyond index and heating. It's fine if you don't have those on, but you will wanna have these first four columns and you wanna make sure that sample time is in a date time class so that you've gone through the code in the, the video lecture on working with date times. So let's take a look um, and we'll set up for ggplot and our data is equal to the spacing PM. And then I'll add a geom point and set the mapping where x is equal to the sample time. And then y is equal to the value. And this, again, is the PM 2.5 value. If we plot that, then you'll see that it's using the default color of black for all of the points. Now we could change that to actually show the value of another column. So in an earlier video, we actually set the mapping for that to map to our AQI column. And that again is showing the categories of, of um, the levels of PM. So there you can see we have different colors for the point where the color specifies which of the AQI categories that observation fell into. But we also might wanna just change all of them to be a different color. So let's see what it would look like to change them all to blue. I can do color equals and then blue in quotation marks, but I have to make sure that I've set that outside of the AES statement. So when I run that, you can see all of the colors have changed to blue. Now again, this is outside of this statement. I've done a comma to put that in as the next argument. I can guarantee that at some point you might forget to do that and you'll instead do something like this. Let me just put the comma here. Where inside the aesthetic, you try to map the color to blue. And what it'll actually do is it'll do, like, um, it will assume that those should all take a value that equals the literal character string blue. So let's look at it. In this case, it's using the default level for the first level of a category in ggplot, which is this kind of like salmon-y color. But over here, it's saying, yes, they're all literally blue in terms of that like character string blue. So if this happens to you sometime, what has happened is that you tried to set that constant aesthetic inside AES rather than outside. So to fix it, just take that and put it outside the parentheses for the AES call, and you should get exactly what you're looking for. You can also do uh, different constants for the point shape. 
So these are some of the different ones you can refer to these by number. So for example, if I wanted to reset everything from a circle to this kind of shape, then I could do that with the shape equals nine. So I'll do that, that down here. Again, you're putting it outside of the AES function call because we want to map it to a constant value rather than mapping it to um, a particular column that we had. So if we run that, you can see that these shapes have changed now. Another thing I can point out at this point, we talked a little bit about the aesthetics for color and fill and how for some shapes you have an inside fill and then a border color. You can see in these examples that for most of these, there's only a single color, everything through 20. But there are a few down here where we have those two pieces, where we have a border and an inside. So 21 is one example. If I set the shape to be equal to 21, you can see now that the borders of it are that blue. But then if we wanted to, we could set the inside as well. So if I do the fill equals red, equals red, we now have red centers and then blue around the outside. So again, here is the code that I was just using to change the shape. In this case, I'm using that shape equals nine. You might be curious about what colors you can set for a constant. It turns out that with R, you could use hex bin codings to set just about any color you want, but there are also a lot of names for a variety of different colors. These are just some examples that so we have blue and then blue four and dark orchid and all of these very like uh, colorful names for everything. If you want some more guidance on how to pick out specific colors, like what names map to different colors, then um, Google is a great resource for that. So if we go into Google, we can look for our colors PDF. And there have been some great PDFs that have been put together showing all of these colors. So here's one example where we're going through and you can see that we've got like forest green and dark slate gray and so on. And, and it scrolls through for several different pages to see all of the options that you have. So here's an example again of using those custom names. We use blue again, and that might be an obvious one to pick, but if we pick one of those other colors that we wanted to use, like dark orchid, we can set that again outside of the aesthetic setting because we want everything in the same color rather than color showing some feature in our data. Moving away from aesthetics, I did want to cover a few extra elements we can add to a ggplot. And all of these are things that we will add with that plus sign. So you can add things like a plot title with ggtitle. You can change the x and y axis labels with xlab, ylab, and the labs function, which lets you kind of do both at once. You can change the limits of your x and y axis with xlim and ylim, and you can use the expand limits to make sure it includes a certain value. For example, if you wanted to make sure an axis included the zero value, you could use expand limits to do that. We'll be working a lot more with these next week when we talk about making really good plots to share with other people and communicate what you found. Again, we won't cover them very deeply this week because the focus is more on creating plots to explore your data. So here we can look at an example, and I'll actually move into our studio again for this. So let's go back. So we've just got that scatter plot again. So we can first uh, maybe change the labels. So we've got labels here for the x-axis and the y-axis, and you'll notice those are just using the column name that we mapped to. We often will want to change that. We have picked column names that are easy for us to type when we're coding, but those might not be the clearest ones to communicate with other people. So I'll use the labs function for that because that really gives a lot of flexibility in changing many of those for the different scales that we have on our plot. So we can do x equals date in 2017. These were all in 2017, right? And then for the y, we can do that that one is the PM value. So now when I run this, you can see in our plot that that's changed those labels. This labs will work with other aesthetics too that you've mapped. So for example, earlier we used the color to show the AQI level. Let's do that again, and you can see that by default, that color scale is also named with AQI, but we could change that in the labs too, so we can come down and do color equals, and then we'll spell it out for people in case they're not familiar with that abbreviation. And now when we run it, it's using that longer label. 
The other thing that we can do here is we can add titles. So we could do the main title, for example, um, Air PM measurements in Beijing, China, uh, 2017. And we could even add a subtitle if we wanted. Um, so in this case, it's the US Embassy um, Air Pollution Monitor. All right, so if we run that, then you can see that that has added a title up here.